मैं डॉक्टर पी डी पंत प्रोफेसर इन जियोलॉजी एंड डायरेक्टर स्कूल ऑफ अर्थ एंड इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस आपके सामने फिर से उपस्थित हूँ आज आपके सामने मैं लेके आया हूँ इमरजेंस एंड इवोल्यूशन ऑफ हिमालय अथार्थ हिमालय की उत्पत्ति और उसका विकास पर चर्चा करने के लिए आया हूँ हम सब जानते हैं कि हिमालय पर्वत श्रृंखला विश्व की अन्य पर्वत श्रृंखलाओं के समान है जिसका मुख्य कारण रहा है प्लेट टेक्टोनिक्स प्लेट टेक्टोनिक्स मीन्स हम सब जानते हैं कि दुनिया भर के कॉन्टिनेंट्स एक जगह से दूसरे दूसरी जगह विस्थापित हो रहे हैं और खिसक रहे हैं जिसको हम बोलते हैं ड्रिफ्टिंग ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट्स द ड्रिफ्टिंग ड्रिफ्टिंग ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट्स इज बेसिकली कॉज्ड बाय द कन्वेक्शन करंट्स दोज आर मूविंग इन साइड द मेंटल ऑफ द अर्थ वी ऑल नो द अर्थ स्ट्रक्चर इज लाइक सच आउटर मोस्ट पार्ट विच इज़ हार्ड इन वेरी हार्ड एंड मेड अप ऑफ रॉक्स इज नोज एज क्रस्ट द थिकनेस इज फ्रॉम फाइव टू थर्टी फाइव किलोमीटर्स फॉलोड बाई मेंटल नियरली अप टू टू थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड किलोमीटर थिक विच इज लिक्विडस इन नेचर एंड इफ यू गो बियॉन्ड दिस वी हैव द कोर विच इज नियरली टू थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड थर्टी किलोमीटर थिक सो कोर इज ऑल्सो लिक्विडस बट द प्रेशर एंड टेम्परेचर इज सो हाई इट बिहेव्स लाइक ए सॉलिड सो द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ द मेंटल इज दैट because of variation in the temperature and the composition it has the convection currents convection currents means the movement of the material from high temperature to low temperature and these are very giant in size and they move very fast and if you see the right uh, top corner so we have shown the, in this diagram it is very clearly shown there are many convection currents these currents sometimes comes towards each other sometimes they move away from each other sometimes they move or they pass parallel to each other because of this behavior of these currents the continents those are lying over this mantle they behave like it behaves like a we call conveyor belt and all the continents of the earth are moving from one place to another place so basically when the convection currents go away from each other they break the continent when they come towards each other they compress these continents and when they pass from each other they tear the continents and makes large fractures so this is the basic concept of plate tectonics so the the major cause of the formation of mountains is basically the plate tectonics so coming to the himalaya so we know because see this diagram is showing the excellent example of plate tectonics one is from the africa we know in african continents because of the impact of these convection currents the con continent is being pulled apart is being broken down and is being stretched away from each other and we can see there are large kilometers long cracks fracture on the surface behaving just like a rift valley so african rift is the region of this one of the plate tectonics where the continent is being pulled apart and this rift valley is followed by many rivers and the lakes if you see the right side we have the lower diagram showing compression ya convergent behavior of the plate tectonics where two continents are brought towards each other and the material between the continents have got compressed and it has given origin to a positive relief that is a mountain so one of the example of such mountain is you can see that in the top right corner is the himalaya where indian subcontinent collided with the tibetan continent and whatever material was in between these two rocks they got compressed and given birth to the mountain chain himalaya so we know the theory of drifting of continents so the big, the beginning of the himalaya starts from 220 million years before means 22 crore saal pehle we know 22 crore saal pehle entire continent was divided into two parts equator se north wali ko hum eurasia bolte the equator se south wali ko gondwana land bolte the 
और इसमें अफ्रीका साउथ अमेरिका अंटार्कटिका ऑस्ट्रेलिया इंडिया अरेबिया और ये सब छोटे पार्ट टर्की ईरान और तिब्बत ये सब एक साथ थे साउथ इक्वेटर के साउथ में देख सकते हैं कि टर्की ईरान और तिब्बत के बीच में छोट एक ओशन है जिसको हम न्यो तैठिस बोलते हैं और उसके उत्तर में फिर से पेलियो तैठिस ओशन है एक बहुत बड़ा ओशन था समुद्र था जिसको हम तैठिस बोलते थे और ठीक 200 मिलियन 20 मिलियन ईयर के बाद बिकॉज ऑफ द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द कॉन्टिनेंट कॉन्वैक्शन करेंट्स ये जितने कॉन्टिनेंट्स हैं एक दूसरे से पुला पार्ट हुए फ्रैक्चर्ड हुए और इन्हें एक दूसरे से अलग अलग घूमना स्टार्ट किया बिकॉज ऑफ द रीजन ऑफ ड्रिफ्टिंग ऑफ द कॉन्टिनेंट्स और समय के साथ देख सकते हैं कि जो लेफ्ट साइड है जहाँ पर आपको शो हो रहा है कि दो एरो दिखा रखे हैं वो एक दूसरे से दूर जा रहे हैं वहाँ से इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट को पुला पार्ट किया गया एंड फाइनली इंडिया स्टार्टेड मूविंग टुवर्ड्स अ नॉर्थ एंड यू नो इन बिटवीन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट एंड द तिब्बत एंड कॉन्टिनेंट देयर इज़ अ बिग ओशन द नेम एज द तटिस ओशन आफ्टर ए सर्टेन इंटरवल द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट कोलाइडेड विद द तिब्बत एंड कॉन्टिनेंट and whatever sediment was in the tethys sea and whatever rocks were around the edge of the tibetan continent or indian subcontinent they all got folded they form a chain of the mountains so if you see from the uh, western side we have their jagras mountains in iran and iraq we have kirthar suleiman in pakistan we have himalaya in india and we have arakam yuma in the burmese region so all these mountains are the product of we call movement of indian subcontinent toward the north this is the answer to how the himalaya was originated given by the geologist so if you see this map this is showing you how this indian subcontinent started moving towards the north from 71 million year before and just before 10 million year the emergence of the mountain started we can see a development of positive relief at the collision zone of india and the tibet and we can see in the western side even in pakistan and the iran we have also development of small mountains and we have also development of mountains in the northern uh, portion of the tibet as well so this started 10 million years before ya lagbhag 1 crore saal pehle now if you see the present in the uh, right hand side the present scenario of indian mountains we can see we have large mountains starting from pakistan going to jammu sukar srinagar and we have their uh, big mountains of karakoram range then we have the himalayan range if you go in the eastern part then finally same goes to tripura and finally to the myanmar region so this entire chain of mountain if you see further extension of this large mountain basically it starts from spain and ends in the fiji it was such a large mountain chain but in indian subcontinent these mountains are termed as the himalaya so himalaya doesn't mean only the portion of the mountain which is covered with the ice for a geologist the entire mountain chain that starts from the end of the plains up to the tibet continent is the himalaya so this is almost a thickness of 3 uh, nearly 300 km and extending from west to east about 2500 kilometers so this entire chain is known as himalaya so it is the himalayan mountain range and the tibetan plateau have formed as a result of the collision between the indian plate and the eurasian plate which begins 50 million years ago and still this is moving towards by 4 to 5 cm every year so every year this continent moving towards the north and we are losing the area and the rise in the height of the mountain is observed there so if you see this uh, diagram it shows how it was formed so if you see the western side showing the southern portion of the indian subcontinent if you see the eastern portion that is shows the tibetan region in between there was a large depression where all sediment got deposited with time the indian subcontinent moved towards the tibetan continent and the sediment and the whatever the large depression filled with the water got reduced because it got compressed and finally if you see end of the last portion you can see 
the himalaya or indian subcontinent finally closed everything and collided with the tibet and the entire sediment what was which were whichever was got deposited in between these two uh, continents got compressed and formed a mountain chain in between these continents this mountain chain is known as himalaya so himalaya was formed by a we can say by continuous northward movement of indian subcontinent which compressed the sediment that was that got deposited in the then the tethy sea and the uh, rocks exposed around the edge of the indian subcontinent and the tibetan subcontinent they all got compressed they formed a positive relief and this relief is currently you can say plus 8000 meter which is average stage well height so it's so much upheaval of the sediment took place and the large mountain chain was formed so this mountain chain is known as himalaya so uh, if you see along this mountain chain if you cut this mountain chain what we got what we got there are lot of deformation seen in the rocks these there are many such large fractures if you see in this diagram upper one we have shown in the right hand side the asian plate that is the tibetan plate where the indian plate there is a black shield collided and we can see fractures were developed the arrow shows how the movement of the sediment took place so the collision zone is known as indo shampur suture zone along which today the indus river is flowing if you go in the tibet and in the leh ladakh you will see the collision zone there and it is followed by the indus river if you come to south we have a, a, another fracture plain that is the trans himadri fault means behind the himalayan uh, snow covered mountains we can see them further coming to the south we have the main central thrust everybody knows about this very popular thrust means a fracture plain along which the sediments are moving towards the south because the north uh, because the southern plate is moving towards north north one is rigid so whatever sediment compressed in between these two it has to move to southward it is moving towards southward then we have main boundary thrust known as mbt you know this is the latest fracture developed on the uh, indian subcontinent along which the sediment is also moving towards the south and finally we have himalayan frontal fault means in front the mountains himalayan mountains we have another fracture fault ko hum hindi mein bhrans bolte hain jab itne bade sediment ko compress karenge to uske beech mein different density ke rocks hain aur jab compress karte hain to ye density ke rocks ek dusre ke sath south ki aur glide kar rahe hain aur is tarah se bante hain इसके लोअर डायग्राम आप देख सकते हैं जिसमें दिखाया गया है कि एम वो फ्रैक्चर है वो व्रंस है जिसके अलॉन्ग हिमालय की सबसे ओल्डेस्ट रॉक्स नीचे से कटकर ऊपर की ओर आ गई हैं और वो जो यंगर रॉक्स हैं जो हमको नीचे बोलते हैं अभी बाकी बताऊंगा लेसर हिमालय उसके ऊपर चढ़ गई हैं तो मेन सेंट्रल थ्रस्ट के, के सहारे से जब सबसे ओल्डेस्ट रॉक्स हैं हिमालय की वो लेसर हिमालय जो रिलेटिवली यंगर हैं उसके ऊपर चढ़ गई हैं और उस पोर्शन को हम हिमाद्री बोलते हैं हिमाद्री मीन्स वो पोर्शन जहाँ पर पूरा बर्फ़ से ढका रहता है वो उसके नीचे सबसे ओल्डेस्ट रॉक्स हैं उसके अगर नॉर्थ में चले जाएं ट्रांस हिमाद्री फॉल्ट बोला है वो रीज़न है जिसको हम आजकल तैठिस रीजन बोलते हैं जहाँ पर तैठिस जो ओशन था उसमें जो सेडिमेंट डिपॉजिट हुआ उसकी रॉक्स एक्सपोज हैं और फिर हम अगर फर्दर नॉर्थ में चले जाएँ फिर इंडो शाहपुर सुचर जोन मिलता है और उसके उत्तर में फिर हमको अपना माउंट कैलाश जो है तिब्बत में वो दिखता है तो जो ब्लैक पोर्शन आप देख रहे हैं ब्लैक बोर्ड ब्लैक इसमें जो पोर्शन दिख रहा है ये इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट का सबसे ओल्डेस्ट पोर्शन है और ये हमारी सबसे ओल्डेस्ट रॉक्स हैं जो कि ग्रेट हिमालय या हिमाद्री में एक्सपोज है इस डायग्राम आप देख सकते हैं जिस ऊपर आपको दिख रहा है कि हमारे पास डिफरेंट डेंसिटी की रॉक्स हैं और डिफरेंट एज ग्रुप की रॉक्स हैं तो जब साउदर्न कॉन्टिनेंट नॉर्थ की ओर मूव कर रहा है और नॉर्थ में वो ब्लॉक्ड है नॉर्थ वाला साउथ को मूव नहीं कर पा रहा है तो जो भी बीच का पोर्शन कंप्रेस हो रहा है सो रेस्ट ऑफ द रॉक्स अलोंग दीज फ्रैक्चर प्लेन्स दे आर ग्लाइडिंग मूविंग साउथवर्ड अलोंग द थ्रस्ट थ्रस्ट प्लेन्स सो लोअर डायग्राम सोज देर आर मैनी 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 थ्रस्ट प्लेन्स इन द हिमालय अलॉन्ग विच 
हिमालयन सेडिमेंट सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स इग्नियस रॉक्स मेटामाफी रॉक्स वट एवर दे आर दे आर मूविंग साउथवर्ड ओवर राइडिंग ईच अदर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ थ्रस्ट सो दैट्स वाई इफ यू गो टू द नॉर्दर्न साइड बेसिकली वी आर गेटिंग द ओल्डर रॉक्स इफ यू गो द साउदर्न साइड वी आर गेटिंग द यंगर रॉक्स बिकॉज ऑफ दिस कॉम्प्रेशन द रॉक्स दो जो आर इन द नॉर्दर्न एज हैव बीन कॉम्प्रेस एंड थ्रस्टेड ओवर द यंगर सेडिमेंट्स सो इफ यू सी दिस डायग्राम दिस क्लियरली सोज हाउ द जियोलॉजिस्ट हैव डिस्क्राइब द वेरियस फ्रैक्चर प्लेन्स या बाउंड्री थ्रस्ट ऑफ द हिमालय लाइक दिस इफ यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम साउथ टू नॉर्दर्न नॉर्थ एरिया द कॉन्टैक्ट ऑफ शिवालिक्स विद द लेसर हिमालय शिवालिक्स मीन्स द रॉक्स विच आर बेसिकली वेरी यंगर नॉट नियरली थर्टी मिलियन ईयर्स ओल्ड नॉट टू ओल्ड दे आर ओवर रिडन बाई द लेसर हिमालयन रॉक्स विच इज सोन हियर बाय ब्लू दे आर बेसिक मोस्ट ऑफ द रॉक्स आर कार्बोनेट इन रेचर दे हैव ओवर रिडन दिस शिवालिक्स अलॉन्ग द मेन बाउंड्री थ्रस्ट वी कॉल इज मेन बाउंड्री थ्रस्ट इफ यू गो फर्दर इन द नॉर्दर्न पार्ट द एम सी टी इज द फ्रैक्चर प्लेन अलॉन्ग विच दिस क्रिस्टलाइन रॉक्स ऑफ ग्रेटर हिमालय हायर हिमालय हैव बीन थ्रस्टेड ओवर द लेसर हिमालय अलॉन्ग एम सी टी मेन थ्रस्ट मेन सेंट्रल थ्रस्ट सो दिस रेड रॉक्स दे आर द ओल्डेस्ट रॉक दे आर ओवर राइडिंग द लेसर हिमालय इफ यू गो बियॉन्ड द एम सी टी रिटर्न एस टी डी साउथ टिबिटियन डिटेसमेंट फॉल्ट या हम इसको ट्रांस माद्री फॉल्ट भी बोलते हैं अलॉन्ग विच द ग्रीन पोर्सन वट एवर यू सी दिस इज द ट्रांस वी कॉल तैटिस सेडिमेंट्स एंड इफ यू गो फर्दर नॉर्थ देन वी हैव दी सांपो शूचर जोन वेयर द कोलिजन ऑफ इंडियन एंड तिबेटन कॉन्टिनेंट टू प्लेस एंड वी एज ऑलरेडी डिस्क्राइब दिस इज ए शेयर जोन अलॉन्ग अलॉन्ग विच अलॉन्ग विच दिस इंडस रिवर इज फ्लोइंग करेंटली सो दिस इज द इंटायर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ हिमालय इफ यू कट और मेक ए सेक्शन अक्रॉस द हिमालय एंड वी कैन सी the oldest rocks are lying over the lesser himalayan rocks which are younger and the youngest rocks are lying at the bottom along the mbt they are overridden by the further older rocks so we have the these three very important structure in the himalaya main boundary thrust main central thrust and transmadri fault ya south tibetan detachment fault if you see this section similarly we have shown here this example we have taken from uttarakhand so these mbt mct transmadri fault ya std or indo sampo suture zone and himalayan frontal fault they all are known as boundary thrust of the himalaya because they mark the boundary of the major formations of himalaya so you can see if you the lower map showing if you we can trace them if you go in the field even we can trace them in the field they are clearly marked over there so northern rocks are overriding uh, over the southern rocks along the various detachment faults or those are termed as the boundary thrust of himalaya so this is you can see lithotectonic setup of himalaya this is the geological map of the himalaya where we have clearly marked how these rocks are distributed right from west to east and how they are overriding each other and how they occur on the surface so if you see this diagram shows what uh, which are the rocks of great himalayan crystalline we call they are archean in age archean means older than 2500 million years old they are highly crystalline rocks they occur in the greater part higher higher part of the himalaya means in beyond the main central main central thrust and bit south of this south tibetan detachment fault so these are crystalline rocks oldest rocks of the himalaya highly metamorphosed and formed with a very high temperature we can see these rocks are occurring over here along this they are they have been overridden the lesser himalaya along the main central thrust zone and these rocks the, these rocks are currently covered by the snow if you see the entire mount snow mountains range of the himalaya great himalayan so these are covered by the various rocks and we can see this 
in the right hand side the columns are showing the different names are given to these rocks types and we call basically the we the great himalayan crystallines a vekata group of rocks so they occur in the highest part or higher part of the himalaya or having the great heights this is uh, for, uh, this 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 is the photograph showing a general behavior of the rocks of the great himalaya where the rocks have been highly we can say metamorphosed and they have been high compressed and changed under very high temperature and the pressure and sometime the minerals forming these rocks behave this type of you can see stretching and we can see rotation of the grains as well they everything was formed at a very deep part with a very high and pressure this then these rocks were followed by lesser himalayan rocks we call protozoic rocks so lesser himalayan rocks means right from i can say nearly to, uh, 2000 million years to 570 million years so these ro rocks of this age are known as lesser himalaya these they generally occur in the lesser height of the himalaya and they are marked by mct in the north and mbt in the south these rocks are basically carbonates they have many fossil fossiliferous rocks and they um, main fossils are, are the stromatolites we call fossil algae dated 1000 million years old and we have the youngest fossil in this area is ediacara ediacaran which is dated up to 572 to 542 so this is the youngest age of lesser himalaya and we have the oldest rocks up to we can say 2000 million years so rocks formed in this period those occur we can say shown here in the form of light gray they are the lesser himalayan rocks bounded by mvt in the south and mct in the north this is one example of the photograph we can see this is taken from the nanital so these are the carbonate beds with interbedded with calcareous ya carbonaceous saline slates this these are followed by the another sediments we call tethys himalaya tethys himalaya sediments they are paleozoic mesozoic sequence so during this period the sediments got deposited in the tethys himalaya and today if you see these rocks are exposed between std ya trans himalayan fault and the indo sampo shuchar zone a very vast area if you see the map in the left top so a very large area is shown there and this is these are the rocks of uh, tethys himalaya and they belong to the we can say right from uh, i can say 465 uh, 500 million year yeah 465 million year to 65 million years so the rocks of this age group are grouped under the tethys himalaya and they are all sedimentary rocks they have many fossils the variety of fossils based on these fossils we have classified these rocks in various formations as well as we have dated them as well we can see this is the photograph taken in the ladakh so this what is this is the tethys himalayan sequence where the rocks there are variety of rocks in variety of colors as well and these rocks are mighty in nature the mountains are mighty in nature and rocks are highly compressed and deformed and we can say in many cases variety of folds are also exposed here the rocks are highly folded coming to the next we have the foldland basin ya yes, shivalik that we call quaternary rocks of himalaya after the tethys himalaya the quaternary sediments means right from 70 we can say 65 75 million year to date with the period is known as the quaternary period during this period the sediments were deposited in the front part of the himalaya because of the continuous deposition the compression there was a there was a positive relief in the northern part and the evolution of river was also there so tributaries were formed also there and because of the erosion of these rising mountains the sediment got deposited in the southern part 
later on this sediment when the raw, the sediment became compact a yeah, lithification took place they became hard and compact the name to these rocks was given shivalik and in general we call them foldland basin of himalaya so these shivalik rocks are exposed in the frontal part of the himalaya between main boundary thrust and the gangetic plain so these rocks are basically fresh water deposits we have fresh they, them we have their fresh water fossils we have fresh water plant fossils we have fresh water animal fossils there all these are exposed there they suggest the environment was hot and humid and fresh water deposits took place there and all these sediments are i we can say they are sandy in nature silty as well colored shales are also there and finally when the deposition end ended we have the cobbles pebbles boulders all these things exposed on the top part so that's why the based on this nature of the lithology we we divide shivaliks in the lower part middle part and the upper part in the right side of this table a column we can see the various names are given to these rock types exposed in the different part of the himalaya and these rocks are grouped under the quaternary sediments of himalaya so this is one of the photograph of the shivaliks how these rock they appear they they are very thick with interbedded shales sometime and they have cancretion as well calcareous content as well which are in the form of cancretion and they have many fossils in this uh, in these rocks so if you see or we have observed many seismic events or we regularly observed many seismic events in the himalaya so when a, with the point of view of a geologist we see them so what we see when they were plotted by the seismologist so what you see the distribution of the focus of this we can say earthquake event is highly concentrated along the mct main central thrust zone we suggest this mct is highly prone to the earthquake and highest amount of stress is being accumulated in this area whenever a movement takes place around mct the or a jerk occurs there so we get the quaking of the ground we get the earthquakes so all the you can see if you go to south himalayan frontal fault mbt so we have a less number of the earthquake centers epicenters maximum number of earthquake are seen you can see all around the mct so at the contact of the oldest rock of himalaya and the lesser himalaya we have perhaps a high contrast in the density and because of this whenever movement takes place we have a large amount of friction also there sometime when this friction or when the stress up this limit of this stress is we can say crossed then we can get the large amount of movement because of this movement along the mct and the fault we get the development of earthquakes or we get the occurrence of the earthquake and the, all the area those are lying in the nearby mct are highly sensitive to the earthquake so if you see these seismic belts of earthquake so in this map we can see majority of their uh, their location is along the mct even the major earthquakes are along the mct minor earthquakes which are below 2 ya 3 they are occurring in the southern part as well but they are not so sensitive but the earthquakes those are occurring plus 5 are very sensitive they generally occur in the northern part of the earth and if you see these earthquakes are basically occurring along these thrust zone main central thrust zone ya mbt etc and particularly in the area where they are further criss crossed by northwest southeast ya no uh, northeast southwest trending faults tier faults those have further uh, cut across these thrust and the lithologies along which stress is being also released and we are getting the occurrence of more and more earthquakes so you can see this diagram of uttarakhand basically 
So we have the faults, we call basically them transverse tear faults. These transverse tear faults, those are cutting across the lithologies or these thrust and faults are more sensitive because they are not only large in the dimension, even they are very prone to release of the earthquake, uh, release of the stress in a very quick mode. So when we have all studied these, uh, these transverse faults, so these transverse faults shows basically a quick change, a fast change in the uh, landforms, change in the behavior of the river as well and change in the behavior of the movement of the sediment as well. So these transverse tear faults are very sensitive. They are relatively moving faster than these thrusts and the faults. So they may be more prone to earthquakes in the future and we have concentrated on the detailed study of some of these transverse tear faults. So one of these transverse tear faults is we can see known as Garampani fault which is in the Kumaon region of Uttarakhand when we move from Nainital to Almora on the way we come across this fault. So we can see we have traced this fault right, right from we can say here in the uh, left side right from Ratighat it goes up to Bamsio on this road. If you see this is very active fault and even if if you see on the right hand side the terrace along this has been uplifted by 124 meters in very short span not a, a during a large duration but in the very short span along this transverse tear fault the terrace of the river locality is the Gazar we call it it has been uplifted, uplifted by 124 meters very quick which shows in this area the relative movement of uh, terrain along this transverse tear fault is relatively high than the uh, nearby area. Similarly, if you come right from Nainital to the Haldwani, Kadgodam, so we have here we call this Kadgodam fault, well known named as Kadgodam fault. This is also very active. When we see around the Dogaon, yeah, there is a locality village uh, Joli and along this fault we have a very large landslide we call Surya Jala landslide and next to that if you see we have a terrace Joli terrace which has been uplifted along this fault by 80 meters. So if you see this is a pear terrace the other part of the terrace is about 80 meter at the base of the river bed however the uplifted portion is at 80 meter up. So it shows these transverse tear faults are very active along which not only the large landslides have occurred before even that till date they are moving continuously up and the terrain including the river terraces they have been uplifted along these faults. So this indicates they are very fast and they have been dated and these faults are not so old just we can say 8 kilo years old they are and along this this very fast movement has taken place in the form of we can say unpaired terraces in the form of sorry uplifted terraces of the river we can say um, Nalena in that area of Dogaon area. Similarly if you see the town of Nainital this is also marred by a big fault which we call lake fault or yeah, Nanital fault and we can see along this fault because of the movement along the fault the local uh, river local uh, tributary was blocked and a sorry river uh, tributary was blocked and a, a lake was formed in this form which is shown in the right hand side as well and this lake is known as Nani, Nani lake or Nanital. So we can see along this fault, if you see here in the northern part we have the older rocks of we call lower crawl, here we have the younger rocks of the upper crawl, even the younger rocks are at higher elevation compared to the lower rocks and along this, this, this is a fault running we call Nanital fault and this fault is also very young, not so old because the, uh, if you go further downward side and this we, we have shown here this fault finally joins the Kadgodam fault and they are just parallel to each other form a anecalon pattern and they are not very old and sediment 
which we see in the uh, deposited in the nanny lake also shows faulting ya upliftment ya ya i can say sediment deformation is also seen there it shows this faults are still very active and uh, we can say micro seismicity is observed recorded along these all uh, local transverse faults similarly if i go in the area bhimtal if you see in the right right, right hand right top so we have here bhimtal we have here nakuchia tal in between these two lakes we have la uh, lake lets ancient lake lets along which the water has been drained out and if you further extend it right from the we call just behind the bhawali we call is nagari from this portion up to the nokochia tal once upon once upon we had a nearly 12 to 13 km long lake with the active nature of these local faults the from majority of, po of the portion the water has been drained out now whatever sediment available is uh, water available is is in the form of bhimtal lake or in the form of nokuchata lake and some few small lakes as well and majority of the water is drained out when this sediment was studied in detail and dated by my colleagues uh, dr kotlia and his team so they have suggested this is very young they basically 3 to 3.5 kilo years old history and and the youngest is at nearly 1900 years old means nearly 3 30000 to 35000 year before these lake was formed because of one activity later on before nearly 2000 years before because of further activeness the water was drained out now we have the rem remains of the lakes there in the form of drained we call dried lakes but some lakes are also available there means these transverse tier faults in himalaya are very active along which not only the local river got blocked they formed the lakes but with the later activity as well the water was also drained out so we have now dry lake lets these are the some of the examples but if you go all along the himalaya so you will see see similar many actions we have many such lakes in himalayan region those are formed by because of this uh, process and there are many uh, older raw lakes those have been drained out we have just remnant of lake sediments so this was all about from my side about the how the himalaya was formed and how it is behaving today simply hopefully i could uh, fulfill your uh, we can say the queries or whatever you think about the himalaya if you have any problem you please may write me or at the given email so i would be happy to answer you about all these questions thank you